It's freaking 2024, guys. Analog is on the way out the door. I'm sorry, that's true. The days of analog have been numbered ever since, by my count, 2019 when DJI released the DJI FPV system. That was the day that analog started declining. You can still find people out there who listen to audio on vinyl, but most people listen on MP3s and streaming. That's just how it is. And these days you can still find a lot of people who fly analog FPV, but the days are declining. Sorry if it hurts. Hey, I'm not here. Facts don't care about your feelings. Sorry if you don't like it, analog pilots, that's a fact. So that makes me wonder, why in the hell has SkyZone released this? The SkyZone Sky O4X Pro. Because like, the SkyZone Sky O4X is a fantastic analog FPV goggle, one of the best. And this is basically just that same goggle, but they've added something. They've added something to make it more compatible with digital FPV. Oh! A really, really good analog FPV goggle with the capability to support digital FPV? Well, I guess that makes some sense after all. I'm Joshua Bardwell. You're going to learn something today. Whenever I review a product like this, the SkyZone Sky O4X Pro, which is based on a previous product that I've already reviewed, it's always kind of tempting to go, yeah, y'all y'all saw my review, right? You know what this product is and then just basically skip it. But I'm not gonna do that, that's not fair, because number one, this isn't just the same product as before, uh, just slightly updated for 2024. And many people haven't seen that old review and you deserve me to look at this product with fresh eyes. But if you are familiar with the SkyZone Sky O4X as an analog goggle, what you need to know is that this is basically just the SkyZone Sky O4X, but updated, to support digital input via the HDMI input. Now, SkyZone goggles have always had an HDMI input. You could plug them into your laptop or your or your computer, and like you could play uh, in your simulator, and you could have the simulator image in the goggles. You could just freaking use it as a computer screen if you really wanted to. It's just a display, and it has an HDMI input, and it can be used as such. But they have not been ideal for use with modern digital FPV systems like this. This is the Walksnail standalone video receiver, and the idea is that this operates just like a set of Walksnail goggles, but it's got an HDMI output, and you plug an HDMI cable into the HDMI output, plug that into your set of goggles, and now you have, well, it's a little clunky, you'd want some way to like mount this, but you basically have a set of Walksnail goggles without ever having to actually buy a set of Walksnail goggles. And that is the promise of these goggles. But do they live up to that promise? Well, there's at least one way I know of for sure that they don't live up to that promise if you're using HD zero. So the, uh, but we're, we're gonna look at that more later in the video. Instead, let's do what I said and approach these goggles with fresh eyes and do a start to finish review of the SkyZone Sky O4X Pro. The first thing you gotta know about these goggles is that they are first and foremost analog FPV goggles. That means that they come with this SkyZone analog receiver module, and they're gonna be able to receive signals from analog FPV video transmitters and analog cameras. And uh, the short version of what that means is that the signal is gonna look basically like television in the 80s or the 90s before we went to digital TV and um, high definition signals. There's gonna be less resolution, and the way that the signal breaks up is going to be analog in nature. We will be going outside to fly them and test the performance of this SkyZone module, uh, but uh, historically, the performance of the SkyZone module has been pretty decent, although maybe not absolutely the best possible analog module you could get. In the past, SkyZone analog FPV goggles supported what's called quadversity. So you would have two receiver antennas here and a second module on the other side of the goggle with two more receiver antennas. That is no longer the case. And I'm kind of okay with that because frankly, the number of situations in which quadversity would actually improve your signal was fairly limited. And very few people actually put a second receiver module in the other side of the goggles anyway. The reason that quadversity is no longer supported is that these goggles have new screens and the new screens are higher resolution and larger, and so they generate more heat. And a fan has actually been added to this side of the goggles to help deal with dissipating some of that heat. 
The screens on the Skyzone Skyo 4X are now 1920 by 1080. That means they are full 1080p resolution, uh, and it also means that they are widescreen. That's as compared to the 1280 by 960 screens on the older version of the Skyzone Skyo 4X, um, which, if you're doing your math carefully right now, you realize means that the older version was not just lower resolution, but it was also 4.3 aspect ratio. Many people feel that 4.3 is a preferable aspect ratio for analog goggles because analog systems come out of the days when video was 4.3. Remember when we didn't have widescreen? No, some of you don't remember when we didn't have widescreen because you're children. I'm old and bitter about it. <laughs> Many people feel that 4.3 is the preferable aspect ratio for analog. Most analog cameras are 4.3. They have 4.3 sensors. Their lens is designed for 4.3. And what that means is that when you take a widescreen 1280 by 960 image and you display a 4.3 image in it, it gets letterboxed or the film enthusiasts out there will say it's not letterboxing. That's the top and bottom. It's pillar boxing. But basically, you're getting a 4.3 image inside a wider screen, and that means you're not using the full resolution of the screen, although the resolution of the screen is more than you need for standard definition anyway, so that's not really an issue. The exact way that that math works out doesn't really matter, but it is worth pointing out that Skyzone have increased the size of the screen on the Skyzone Skyo 4X Pro. They now have a 52 degree field of view compared to the 46 degree field of view of the older version. So the screen has not just gotten higher resolution and wider, but it also has gotten larger. Instead of looking this big, it's going to look this big and it's going to take up more of your vision. And that means that when you're using these with an analog camera or a digital camera, they can do 4.3 too, although they usually default to widescreen, you're going to get a much larger image. But the resolution in the field of view isn't the only thing that's changed about the screens in the Skyzone Skyo 4X Pro. The other thing that's changed is the frame rate. And this is driven by modern high definition digital systems that can do higher frame rates. So the DJI digital system does uh, 100 frames per second to 120 frames per second, depending on which goggles you've got. And that doesn't matter at all for the purposes of this video, because these goggles will not bind to the DJI digital system. And the DJI digital system doesn't really have a great solution for HDMI output. There's no like standalone DJI receiver that does HDMI output. So you're just not going to be using the DJI 03, the, the Caddx Vista, the Runcam Link, all that DJI stuff. Forget about it. It has nothing to do with these goggles in any meaningful sense. HD0 can be used with these goggles. This is the sort of gotcha that I teased earlier in the video. HD0 does have a standalone video receiver and it does have an HDMI output that will let it be used with the HDMI input on the Skyzone Skyo 4X Pro to fly a quadcopter with an HD0 video transmitter on it. But the higher frame rate of the Skyzone Skyo 4X screen is not going to be useful here. You see, HC0's lowest latency mode uses 90 frames per second from the camera, but only the HD0 goggles are capable of actually taking advantage of that 90 FPS mode. You can use the standalone receiver with a 90 FPS camera, but it will not output 90 FPS from the HDMI output. And so if you were to use HD0 with these Skyzone goggles, you would only be able to effectively get 60 FPS. Still usable, but not the absolute best performance you were probably hoping for when you heard that these goggles had a 100 frame per second OLED screen. So then what in the hell does take advantage of the 100 frame per second OLED screen? walk snail. That's basically it. These goggles are basically made for people who want to do analog and walk snail. That's the, that's the advantage. Because the walk snail standalone video receiver does output 100 frames per second and the sky's own goggle can display that 100 frames per second signal. At least that's the hope. I haven't tested it yet. I'm going to test it and we'll see how it flies in real life. Real quick, let's just take a little tour around all these controls on the goggles. Uh, there is a power input. It can take DC in up to 6S voltage, 2S to 6S. So you can basically use pretty much all your flight packs. You can just grab one out of your bag, plug it into this cable, which comes with the goggles. It is an XT60 to DC, and that's how you'll power the goggles. That's great. There is a head tracker output if you use a head tracker. Very few people do, but it does have a head tracker built in and can output uh, head tracker signals. 
There's a USB port here which can be used to power the goggles from a USB power bank and can also be used to update firmware on the goggles. Uh, here on the right side, we've got the HDMI input, as you saw, uh, a SD card for recording DVR and maybe doing firmware updates, I'm not so sure about that, uh, and uh, an AV input for use with an external analog ground station, although most people are going to be using the uh, built-in receiver, as well as a headphone output to, if you've got an analog video system that also does audio, you can have an earpiece or headphones uh, to listen to that. Finally, we've got the diopter adjustments and the interpupillary distance, the IPD adjustments. These can move them left and right to adjust for the spacing of your eyes and focus adjustments. And according to the manual, the focus adjustment is minus two to plus six diopters uh, and 58 to 71 millimeters interpupillary distance. That's pretty standard for most FPV goggles. One of the things people really struggle with with FPV goggles is the fit of the goggle on your face. And SkyZone has a clever way of dealing with this. You can see here that the faceplate I've got is fairly rounded and narrower, but the goggles also come with this faceplate, which is a wider, flatter faceplate, and you can choose whichever one fits your face the best. I can't help but notice how much effort has been put into the cooling and defogging system of these goggles. Look at these little, I think these are like fan outputs to blow air across the eyepieces to keep them from fogging up and I don't know, potentially also like dry your eyes out. I don't know, but like there's so much effort. You can see we've got like fan holes here behind the eyes. We've got fan intakes here. Like a lot of attention has been play, paid to cooling and defogging these goggles. And it really shows that SkyZone has been making goggles like this for a long time and knows how to anticipate and solve these kind of issues. Walk Snell, I'm looking at you with the Caddx Goggles X overheating and the screen shutting down and all that. DJI making goggles with no fans in them at all and just saying, why don't you just go inside if your goggles fog up? I can't do that. I'm, a sh I'm shooting a video. Thanks, SkyZone. <laughs> Since the killer feature of the SkyZone Skyo 4X Pro might just be its compatibility with the WalkSnail system's high frame rate mode, I've set up a little test here on the bench to confirm whether the SkyZone can actually work with all of the different video modes that the uh, WalkSnail system can output. Um, in order to do that, I've got the WalkSnail Goggles X here with their HDMI output wired to the HDMI input of the SkyZone. Uh, I could have also done this with the Waxnail ground station. I just happened to have the Goggles X already bound to all my quadcopters. The results should be the same. And I'm just gonna take this GoPro and put it in the screen of the goggles so you can kind of see what they do when I feed them different signals. Bear in mind that you are looking at a GoPro held by hand inside the screen of the goggles, focused manually, that you're not gonna be getting the exact image quality that you would get if you actually put your eyes in the goggles, but there are gonna be some results here that I think you're gonna be very interested in. So first we'll test the goggles in 720p standard frame rate 60 FPS and they do work fine and that's kind of to be expected. This is a pretty widespread frame rate. Just about any display device should support 720p 60. Next, we put the goggles into 720p 100 frames per second, high frame rate mode and sure enough, they do work again. Although uh, one time when I switched modes, I had to unplug and replug the HDMI in order to get it to work. It just didn't sync up right, but every other time it worked perfectly. Next, we're gonna go to 1080p, and we're gonna try 1080p 60 standard frame rate mode, and sure enough, they do work there. Walksnail recently added the ability to do 1080p 100 frames per second high frame rate mode, and the uh, Sky Zones actually don't seem to support that at all. Nothing I could do could make them support that. That doesn't actually surprise me. I'm of the belief that all of these goggles use the exact same display. There's like only one uh, 10, 1920 by 1080, 100 frame per second OLED micro display. I think it's made for camera viewfinder and I think it's made by Sony. And basically all these manufacturers buy it and put it in their goggles. And when HD Zero did that, 
they initially refused to support the 100 frame per second mode of walk snail because they said that it was overdriving the display outside its safe parameters and HC0 didn't want to do that at the risk of the longevity of the display. But later they changed their mind because they decided that running at 720p100 was safe enough, but running at 1080p100 was too much. Who knows who's right about that because obviously Walk Snail feels fine running these goggles at 1080p 100. That doesn't mean that's necessarily what's best for the goggles, and that might explain why the Sky Zone doesn't support that mode, or doesn't seem to. Finally, I tested the Sky Zone goggles using Walk Snail's racing mode, which outputs 540p at 100 frames per second. And this is a completely non standard video format that only FPV goggles support. I wouldn't have been surprised to learn that the Sky Zone goggles didn't work with it. Uh, but they did. They did. They worked fine. And I don't know if that's because, like, for example, could the Goggles X be upscaling the output to 720p? I'm not really sure. All I know is that it worked, and that's great. Now, I did notice some issues with the display in the Sky Zone, though. And if you take a look at this clip, I've got the settings on the GoPro exactly the same. No change in white balance or exposure between the two goggles. And as I go back and forth, I hope you can see that the display in the Sky Zone is significantly brighter and a different color temperature than that of the Goggles X. To me, the Sky Zone looks overexposed and of a weird color temperature. That's something that you can change. The Sky Zone does have adjustable image settings, but it is kind of interesting and maybe a little bit uh, un suspicious or unusual that the default settings on the Goggles X look so much better than the default settings on the Sky Zone, at least to my eyes. There's one other thing I have to say with regards to image quality, and as uh, much as it pains me, I just can't let it slide. The right hand optics on my goggle have two pieces of dust, large pieces of dust or debris inside them. It is not something that's on the eyepiece that I could wipe away. It is inside. You can clearly tell that because it goes into and out of focus as you move the focus and you can actually see one of them moving as you do the focus. It's on the ele lens element that moves. There is no other way to slice this than that this is a manufacturing defect. The optics have to be opened up and cleaned out and if I was a customer I would expect that SkyZone would be exchanging these goggles for me. SkyZone has reasonably good customer service, and I hope that they would exchange them for you. But as a customer who bought them, I'd be extremely annoyed. I have to hope that this is an exception, and it's just the reviewer's curse. But I, of course, I, I don't know. Well, there's a few things about these goggles that we can't possibly know without taking them out to fly them, and that's what we're going to do just as soon as I tell you about my Patreon. Patreon is a website where you can subscribe to me. For as little as $2 a month or more if you feel like I've earned it, the amount that you subscribe at is totally up to you and you can stop whenever you decide you want to. Just think about the amount of value you get out of the content you watch in terms of entertainment, in terms of education, problems I helped you solve, things I taught you how to do, or maybe products that I helped you buy or avoid buying because it would have been a huge mistake. Whatever all that's worth to you, Pick a number, head on down to the link in the video description below and sign up. I would love to have you as a supporter at any level. Patrons get access to my Discord server, which is full of friendly people who are there to talk with you about FPV, to help you solve problems. There's even a buy, sell, trade forum if you wanna trade among some, well, hopefully more trustworthy than average people since they support me. But the main reason I hope you choose to sign up today is just because you've been watching my content for a long time and you've decided today's the day, it's finally time to give something back. If that is the case, link down below to my Patreon. And if not, hey, I'm gonna keep making the content. I'll keep putting it out there. Maybe someday that day will come. Before we put the goggles on and fly them, uh, we're gonna put the goggles on and feel how they feel on my face. Because the fit of goggles is one of the most controversial things, and frankly, one of the most difficult things to get right. And I gotta say, SkyZone goggles historically have been some of the best fitting goggles that I've ever worn. Maybe it is because they have two different face plates and I can custom tailor it to my face. Maybe I'm just lucky and I just happen to fit the shape of face that they aim for. There are no pressure points, like no pressure up under my nose, no pressure 
pressure across my brow or my temples, but there is even contact across my whole face. A lot of times the goggles will have like a gap here and the gap, there is no gap. There is no light leak up under the nose. The only place there's a tiny amount of light leak is that there is a little gap right here for air to flow. They blow air across the eye, the eyepieces to keep them from getting fogged up. And there's a little exhaust, I guess you would call it here, that lets a tiny amount of light in if I look just the right direction. Otherwise, the fit is basically perfect. That's not gonna be true for everybody. Everybody's face is different, but at least for myself, that's the experience that I have. Now you are gonna notice as we go into the flight test that I am not using the antennas that come with the goggles. These are aftermarket upgrade antennas and some people would say, well, that's hardly fair. You should test it as delivered, but I'm not gonna do that because the little rubber ducky antennas that they deliver it with, just no one should use them. They're linear polarized and linear polarized antennas are not gonna give you the best video performance and they are not what's on your quad. You definitely wanna get aftermarket circular polarized antennas. You don't have to get something super expensive, but you do have to get something and you feel free to add that to the price of the goggles if you feel like that's a fair comparison against another set of goggles that comes with a set of circular antennas. And the first thing I notice as I look through these goggles is that the image is being stretched. Do you see my face is not supposed to be this is fat. <laughs> the reason it's stretched is that this is a widescreen 16.9 display, and this is a 4.3 standard aspect ratio camera, and there is a way that we can fix that. So I'm gonna go into the goggle menu on the right-hand side of the screen, and I'm gonna go into the display, and in the display, I can change the aspect ratio from 16.9 widescreen to 4.3. I also wanna show you while we're here that there's also an option, small FOV, which is 4.3, but shrunk down significantly. Is that 4.3 or is it 69? Do I have a fat face or do I have a normal face? Looks like a normal face. Uh, the reason for that is that the large 50 degree field of view of these goggles gives you this super big screen immersive experience. But number one, some people like to be able to see the whole screen without having to like feel like they're almost turning their head, not literally, but like shifting their eyes. And the other is racers specifically like to see like the whole screen all at once, including all of their OSD elements and everything. Racers often like to run with a little bit smaller FOV. I have to say though, that the small FOV here is really freaking small. I almost wish that there was like a, several different grades where I could get it maybe 10 or 15% smaller and not like half the size, but it's better than like not giving you the option at all. Another downside of this ultra large 50 degree field of view is that if you don't have the goggles placed like perfectly on your face, then the edge of the circular optic is gonna cut off the corner of the screen. I've tried to simulate that here with a handheld camera. It's a little difficult to show exactly what you see when you've actually got them uh, on your face. So for example, I have my battery voltage in the very lower left-hand corner of the screen and depending on like how they are on my face, sometimes I look down there with my eye and I can't see it because it's being cut off. I feel like a 50 degree field of view is frankly a little too much of a good thing. I feel like 46-ish degrees uh, field of view is where the screens and optics that tend to go in FPV goggles really shine. It is a beautiful day to be out flying. I'll tell you what, it's a little chilly, but gorgeous. Um, and the first thing I wanna see is just how the goggle receiver is doing, like holding the signal together. Uh, our video transmitter is a TBS Unify. So it's got good output power and in the distance that we're flying here in my yard, it should do a pretty much perfect job. And it pretty much is, it's holding in nicely. What happens if I fly like behind the house? We'll break up, not too bad. No screen rolling, no screen flashing. That's what we would want from a modern analog receiver. A little bit of breakup, but the screen stays stable. I can't bear, oh my God, oh, it's so bad. Analog cameras are the worst. Uh, digital. We're looking real good. Let's, um, let's try flying this a little further out and see if we can get a little breakup. Uh, I am not facing my antennas towards this quad, so I'm gonna try to induce a little breakup intentionally. But again, even as the signal is getting weaker here, let's just do a little turn. Even as the signal is getting weaker here, we are 
staying stable, no screen rolling, no none of that nonsense. What if I drop down into this field even lower? See? The signal is, the image is staying stable even though the signal is very weak due to uh, terrain. It's fantastic. It's doing a good job. It's doing a great job, honestly. Now, a lot of times in a video like this, I will skip a price comparison because prices in the world of FPV change so much that anything I put here right now is going to be out of date in a few months. But pricing in FPV goggles is super competitive right now. Like, you can get the V2 DJI goggles for around $300 in like an open box refurb. Um, you can get the Fat Shark Dominator goggles, that's the walk snail goggles from Fat Shark, uh, for $380 brand new. So if you are the kind of person who wants to get into a digital FPV system, you got some options at surprisingly low price points. Now these goggles, <laughs> these goggles are 600 bucks. What is that like? How does that stack up? The Walksnail Goggles X are $459 right now. That's about $140 cheaper than the Sky Zones. They are obviously going to be the best at doing the Walksnail system, but if you only cared about the Walksnail system, you might just spend $380 and get the Fat Shark Dominator Goggles. For more on that decision, you should watch my review of the Walksnail Goggles X. But how do the Goggles X stack up against the Sky Zones? I think that the person considering these goggles is going to be a person who flies both analog and walk snail. The sky zones are going to be more for a person who flies first and foremost analog and then kind of wants to dip their toe over into the walk snail world. And you're going to get basically the full experience and performance of the walk snail system with very little downside. Uh, uh, going the other direction, the goggles X are pretty terrible analog goggles. And once again, I mean, they, they'll do it, but they're not great. And especially if you're first and foremost analog, I wouldn't choose them. And for more on that, I'll put a link to my Goggles X review down in the video description. Another goggle that we have to compare to is the HD Zero goggle. And at first, it looks like the HD Zero goggle costs the same as the Sky Zone, 600 bucks. But that comparison isn't quite fair. Before I elaborate on that, let me just say the HD Zero is an excellent, excellent analog goggle. It's got a great display. It's optimized for analog. It's extremely low latency. It has a fantastic DVR. It's one of the best analog goggles out there. The only place it falls short is if if you're using an HD Zero goggle in a high density environment, like a race where there's a lot of pilots in the air at the same time, or if you're using the HD Zero goggle to do really long range where the signal gets very, very weak, it can have some issues locking onto the signal. Some racers have even switched away from the HD Zero goggle after switching to it because of issues they ran into at the race. But if you don't care about those issues, the HD Zero is a really exceptionally good analog goggle. The reason that it's uh, yes and no on the price comparison is this. The HD Zero goggle doesn't come with an analog module. The Sky Zone goggle does come with an analog module, and that means you're going to spend another $100 or $150 to get the HD Zero goggle to be able to do analog. But that doesn't mean that the HD Zero goggle is $150 more expensive because the Sky Zone goggle doesn't come with an HD Zero module. So you could just as easily buy an aftermarket HD Zero module for your Sky Zone goggle to let it support HD Zero. And then you'd have a goggle that supports both analog and HD zero, and these two would be pretty close to price parity. But they wouldn't be close to performance parity because the Sky Zone with the third, with the aftermarket HD zero module can't do the 90 FPS mode. The HD zero doesn't do that. So if you were a person who was very interested in HD zero, you would want to go with the HD zero goggle even though the Sky Zone can technically support HD Zero because you would want the full performance. And you wouldn't be giving up anything in terms of analog performance or the ability to support walk snail if you bought a walk snail standalone receiver. For those who really care about all three of the systems, the HD Zero goggle is probably going to be the better one. But if you're somebody who cares about analog first and foremost, and you want a pretty solid analog goggle with the ability to do aftermarket HD Zero or walk snail via the HDMI input, the Sky Zone Sky 4 4X Pro 
looks like a pretty solid choice. Well, if you are interested in picking up the Skyzone Sky 04X, there are links in the video description below. And those links are not just a convenience to help you find the product, they also are affiliate links. And that means that when you click that link and then make any purchase at the affiliated vendor, I get a small commission. It's just the, your way of saying, hey, Bardwell sent me, and then the store gives me, some would call it a kickback. Clicking those links is the easiest way to support the channel. It doesn't cost you anything extra. It just takes the time to find that. You can even bookmark the link and click that link before you do any shopping at that store and I get a little commission. It sure does help me out. Where to go from here? I think that probably you would like to see my review of the HD Zero goggles and my review of the Walksnail Goggles X, two of the main competitors these days for the Skyzone Sky 04X Pro. I'm gonna put cards on screen and links in the video description below where you can check those out.